everyone, this is Gurmeh Harkar. Welcome to Leap Scholars YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. I am today sitting in Oxford University, my alma mater. It is so wonderful to be back in university. And today I have with me a current PhD student, Simran Ji. Simran, hi. hi. Hi, uh, nice to meet you. It's very nice to meet you. And today, so if you are someone who is planning to apply to Oxford University, Simran is going to share his experiences with us, his experiences applying, his experiences sharing funding. So do stick around and see this interview. So Simranji, tell viewers a bit about your profile and your journey so far. So uh, my journey started in 2013 when I pursued my undergrad in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. It was in uh, aerospace engineering, and uh, thereafter I did a bunch of bunch of internships, uh, such as in Mercedes and uh, in my own lab laboratory over there. Um, I got a couple or three research papers, mm -hmm. uh, including my conferences and uh, prestigious journals, uh, such as Elsevier. And um, after that, I got a kick, uh, which is to pursue an um, master's of th master in thesis yeah. in Canada. So it was in planetary sciences, mm -hmm. looking into Jupiter and Neptune, mm -hmm. uh, the environment inside. I also want to know, you know, you're from Ludhiana, I'm from Jalanda, we're yeah. almost neighbors. Um, and I know this is something that I've spoken about multiple in multiple spaces, but I would ask your take on this. What do you think Oxford looks for in a student? So Oxford commonly looks for in a student, uh, they should be nat natural. They, they, students say in Oxford, they are not um, like from a different planet altogether. This is what we have a percep yeah. perception about. Um, they, they grew up uh, more often just, just like us, um, but they have a basic skills which are very strong. Um, for example, I can take example of uh, math. Mm -hmm. So they have a strong base in it. Yeah. However, when we talk about um, with the, like like I grew up yeah. uh, studying mathematics, my my base would not have been so strong compared to uh, the students here. Here they are; they have got integrated ones, mm -hmm. and in the final year, what they have what they call masters. So they have got uh, their hands-on experiences, yeah. such as uh, working in in one of those laboratories or mm -hmm. work, or doing some some sort of an internship yeah. and then converting that internship or projects mm -hmm. into um, kind of uh, their thesis, yeah. right? And then they got their interviews done based upon these th these thesis. So is an SOP or a CV, what is there one document that is more important than the other or is it all the same? I think a uh, statement of purpose is very, very significant um, because it gives an idea of what student is trying to do in the future yeah. and uh, having said the resources they respect their resources a lot yeah. so if they're investing something yeah. all the we all the students pay them fees but that aside to that yeah. uh, they're investing their resources Oxford yeah. resources to on onto a student mm -hmm. so they are really looking forward to if a student has uh, has a motivation to go forward yeah uh, if that's the case they have found out and based upon that it's not that you have just starting from the scratch yeah. it's like you really had 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 done something before what about standardized testings uh, how important are for example GRE GMAT IELTS scores uh, they are very significant but at the same time mostly US colleges look for GREs they are not here, uh, there are specialized testing, uh, mm -hmm. for example, we're calling it as physics aptitude test, if I'm not yeah. wrong, for uh, physics as well mm -hmm. as engineering. Um, yeah. yeah, so these kind of testing, what they, uh, so after the short list of a mm -hmm. bunch of students, so they invite them mm -hmm. uh, to Oxford at during pandemic, it, it was done online, yeah. but uh, this is what it's done. and. Yeah. Uh, and it happens everywhere. Mm -hmm. We are talking about New Delhi. There, there are centers in Mumbai as well. So, yeah. uh, and then after that, uh, they are, the uh, students are called for the interviews. Mm -hmm. And uh, once they are shortlisted in, in, in the interviews, uh, then they got to shortlist their, uh, for their funding as well. Yeah. No, but thank you so much. I think talking about like the procedure to get into Oxford, um, what was your application journey like? Uh, when did you start and, and when did you hear back from the college? So, Application process for an undergrad and a grad student, they are very different. Yeah. Uh, when we are talking about, I'm, I don't really want to say anything about the undergrad mm. process, but then it is very much similar to a grad process, but yeah. a bit of tricks and tricks here and there. Yeah. Uh, for me, it started off uh, one year yeah. before, um, somewhere close to that. So I, I ended up 
uh, getting in here in 2021. Yeah. Yeah. So my it's in October when when my course started. Yeah. So I eventually applied. Um, it was in uh, August mm. uh, or September, some somewhere somewhere that time yeah. uh, in 2020. Yeah. So in my in in uh, in my process started off with applying and writing to, you know, uh, looking into mm. uh, different professors' profile mm. to whom I I really match in terms of research interests. Yeah. And um, then I applied to it. Yeah. Um, it takes about two two months or so when yeah. if if professor really feel yeah. like you you could be one of the one of the potential yeah. students then they would write you back yeah. in terms of interviewing you yeah. uh then uh, after after the interview happened they again would shortlist a bunch yeah. uh depending on what they have vacancy in yeah. terms of the vacancy and then they would send you a probation uh sort of uh, you yeah. know yeah. uh that letter which says that you have to Hmm. You have to have uh, kind of funding yeah. to to show it to them so that they can. Uh, yeah, that's a provisional letter yeah. that, that they would send you, yeah. and then uh, the final one would would be sent to you as soon as you are you you are secured with the funding. And I've spoken about it multiple times that there are Oxford scholarships like the Rhodes, like the WHE Trust. Um, but I want to know, you know, I do want to I want you to revisit that again where you talk about other sources of funding. So what happens when a student doesn't get a scholarship? I think the ideal is one does and yeah. it's an easy path. But often and most of the time, that's not the case, right? Um, but there are also other ways of funding. So would you maybe elaborate a bit on that? So uh, based upon my experience, I would say don't just simply rely on Oxford scholarships, mm -hmm. although there are thousands of yeah. them, but then uh, the uh, the numbers are really are yeah. really low. What you can do is separately up uh, apply to external sources yeah. uh, because if you don't really get into Oxford scholarship mm. don't don't really let your shoulders down you can yeah. really apply for other ones which uh, mm -hmm. such as uh, Shiv Lux uh, yeah. some, some, yeah. some some name is there yeah. I'm kind of forgetting uh, Iklak scholarship is there as well yeah. Right and uh, Root Scholarship, one of yeah. the prestigious, yeah. uh, it, uh, and Commonwealth yeah. most importantly, and uh, Shevening yeah. is one of them, yeah. and uh, yeah, so there are a bunch of scholarships mm. that one can apply to, and uh, but again, yeah. they would really look into uh, the overall uh, yeah. structure of a of a student. What opportunities lie in aeronautical research for you? Yeah, so, like especially in the UK. Yeah, so for me, uh, choosing Oxford was a different thing altogether in terms of everyone knows Oxford, but then uh, yeah. what what makes Oxford Oxford is yeah. their laboratories and their, yeah. the kind of research, and most importantly, the ethics which lie within yeah. Oxford. Um, so I have been looking into those uh, earlier when yeah. when I was applying. So I was exploring pro uh, professors' profile, mm -hmm. what they have actually you know done, yeah. or or does it does it really match to yeah. my research interest as well? Yeah. And uh, then I found a, a bunch of uh, really good research papers. And uh, when I was doing my research as well yeah. uh, during my undergrad level, so I was uh, so need to do literature mm -hmm. review and all sorts of that. So it really uh, you really come across those profiles right yeah. um so it happened to me uh, my professor uh my supervisor mm -hmm. is uh is someone i've been uh, i've been looking up to since my yeah. undergrad days um based upon the research that he has done mm -hmm. and all sorts of that and coming next to yeah. uh the aerospace yeah. uh, i think after pre-exit happened so that again gives us an opportunity yeah. uh, being an immigrant hmm. uh, as a student so that you can really explore yeah. uh, and get more and more opportunities and more more funding as well yeah. um, after after you graduate yeah. so that that was one of those uh, fortunate things yeah. um, that happened suddenly yeah no but that's so true and also you know just talking about oxford you before oxford you've also been in canada i don't know there are students who would want to apply to oxford but as we've spoken that it is a fairly it is a fairly difficult process to um, go through, you know, there are scholarships, but there are also external fundings. But you also went to Canada. What was your experience in Canada like? Um, and it is, you know, it is also one of the more affordable options um, for a lot of students in, from India to go study and, and it has top world class education. So what was your experience in Canada like as compared to the UK? Um, and what what's the differences and what are the similarities? One cannot find lots of differences between Canada and the UK. Yeah. They're they're like 
very much similar mm-hmm. uh, in terms of their work ethics yeah. and uh, a lot more chilled environment yeah. and uh, when we talk about work life balance yeah. it really exists here uh, before 2019 when mm-hmm. i left india um i i had no idea what, what work life balance or yeah. you know a weekend holiday yeah. uh, does really mean yeah. so since i uh, migrated yeah. to the west i really felt felt that yeah. essence so that makes uh, the west a little bit different yeah. uh, as well yeah um apart from culture so the people they they are you really want to get y- yeah. you know in touch with the uh, nobel prize yeah. uh, lo- nobel laureates yeah. or maybe uh, those who have been doing really yeah. really good in their field um so i have i've got an opportunity to uh meet one of one of the uh one of the students of uh, professor stephen hawking yeah. back in back in canada that is so interesting yeah, yeah. so when i when i met him mm-hmm. uh he was working in black hole theory mm-hmm. and uh, he was uh, some we, we are just kind of shifting yeah. to off context but i really want to add this yeah. that um he he bet uh mm-hmm. with uh, professor hawking mm-hmm. if the go- if if uh, on one of those uh, black hole theories and yeah. he really wanted yeah. he you can still google is <laughs> ima- google is picture having yeah. having a bet of like 20 20 pounds yeah. uh, that he really wanted and then he shifted back to cambridge cambridge yeah. uh, so it was one of those journeys that mm. uh, you really feel like you know one could do masters after pursuing phd yeah, yeah. so he he really did it and yeah. and uh, after after doing his phd so it yeah. was really nice meeting such great yeah. people and yeah. um and yeah the, these sorts of things that really motivates you you know your story your journey has been so great um what are some you know final words of advice to whoever's watching the video what should they do how should they apply what should how you know how strong will do they need to have to go through this very draining process just do what you really like yeah. uh not because i did engineering and uh, most of my friends have done engineering yeah uh but most of them didn't really want to do engineering mm. so you really have to do what you really want to yeah. you can't really excel in your field mm. unless you have devoted yourself yeah uh to it um so that's pretty much it yeah. um No thank you so much thank you so much Sharman this was a brilliant interview and thank you so much guys for staying with us till the end if you have any questions put them out in the comments and we'd reach out to you and those of you who are looking to apply to the UK or anywhere abroad and are looking for uh, a free expert consultation check the description box thank you so much for being with us and Sharman sure. thank, thank you. you so much thank you.